so much. Uh, my name is Debbie Hickson. I am the widow of Chris Hickson, one of the victims of the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas mass shooting on February 14th of 2018. And today I'm just going to share a little bit about um, our story and really how you can take a tragedy and turn it into some kind of purpose that helps you to honor and remember the person that was lost. I'm going to start off telling you a little bit about the tragedy, life with Chris, life without Chris, and how it is that we can turn our pain into purpose and find our way through the darkness. Um, so February 14th, 2018 was Valentine's Day. It was also Ash Wednesday, a day of love and a day of reflection. For us, it started off as a normal day. Corey, our younger son, was very excited about Valentine's Day and insisted that we opened our Valentine's Day presents before everybody went to work because Chris was an athletic director at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas and often came home late. And Corey was not about to wait until 10 o'clock at night to get his Valentine's Day candy. Um, Chris got me these earrings that I have on. Chris got candy, Corey got candy, and then I reminded him that it was Ash Wednesday and that I told him we were going to take, I was going to take Corey to church in the morning because it's easier than going at nighttime. And he said, no, wait for me. I promise that I'm going to be home. Um, and if I'm going to be late, I'll call you and you can take Corey to, to mass. I said, okay. So we went on our way, kissed each other, said we loved, loved each other and, um, you know, happy Valentine's day at two, 15-ish, 2.30 that afternoon, um, all of a sudden the news started going on and on about there was a shooting. Um, and I looked and it was Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, where Chris works. I, um, it's very hard to process that, right? That these things, they don't happen to, to you. You hear about them, they happen to other people, but it kind of puts you in a tailspin. So I called his phone, someone answered his phone, and said, Chris has been shot, I don't know anything else, and they hung up. That was at 2.30. Started trying to call people. Where should we go? What, do you know anything? Nobody had any answers. Um, about 7.30, 8 o'clock that night, someone finally called and said, you need to go to the Marriott. They're going to tell you what's going on. So we drove there. Mind you, we live in Hollywood. <clears throat> All of this was in Parkland, which is almost on the other side of the world. It just wasn't a place that we went to all the time. So we were unfamiliar with the roads. We were unfamiliar with the hotel we were going to. Um, so there was just a lot of confusion going on. What we found out about midnight, one o'clock in the morning, was that Chris had been murdered along with um, 16 other people by someone who had easy access to an AR-15, a weapon of war, and his sole purpose was to murder as many people as possible. Our life changed forever that day, and it's just, it's hard to explain, but I wanted to just um, tell you a little bit about what life was with Chris, and then what our life was without Chris. Chris and I met in 1988 at a wedding. We were married in 1990 and decided that we wanted to start a family. So in 1992, we had our oldest son, Tom, and in 1995, we had our youngest son, Corey. Corey was born with um, missing the left side of his heart, grade four bleeds on both sides of his brain. So needless to say, it was not an easy start of, of our family before Corey was born, my mom had had an aneurysm that ruptured, and we took care of her in our house. So it was not your traditional, easy honeymoon, you know, you're, you're first married and life is just easy and you, you just enjoy each other. We really started our marriage off with a lot of things going on, and our life just kind of continued that way. And really early on, we were afraid that Corey was not going to live very long, and we wanted his life to be as full as possible. So we did everything that you could imagine. We started off being so nervous about taking him anywhere and doing anything, and then we really 
thought about it and thought, if his life is going to be short, we want it to have value. So we have amazing friends. We're godparents to um, two beautiful Hi. children. And um, <laughs> so they, we spent a lot of time with them. This is also just, you can just see that Chris loved being around family. He loved being around people, and it made our life fuller. He would walk into a room, and immediately you felt like you were part of his family, and you were. <laughs> so it wasn't just a feeling. He would invite you over to dinner. We would have barbecues at our house. Chris was very connected with both of his sons in different ways. With Tommy, he was very connected through a military um, and love of history. And with Corey, he was connected with a love of athletics. Corey was a part of the Special Olympics, and he loved being his dad's helper. Chris was the athletic director at three different schools, and Corey was always his special assistant. And even though he was busy all the time, he was busy with us because we would always go to those athletic events. Corey would be his helper. Tommy might be the timer for a game. And I was running around doing whatever it was they asked me to do. Chris was our sense of security. He was the anchor of, of who we were. He was when we decided what time we were going to eat dinner, what movies we wanted to go to, where we were going on vacation. That was, he was the center of those decisions that we made in our life. Chris was also in the military. He spent 27 years in the Navy. He spent um, the first six as active duty and then the last 21 in the reserves. He loved being in the Navy. He loved serving his country. He was so very proud. He went in the Navy right out of high school. He did a variety of different things. Eventually, he was part of the military police, something that meant a lot to him and also something that he shared with our son, Tom. Tom eventually went to ROTC at USF and became a Marine, and he has since gotten out, but he ended up as a captain in the Marine Corps. And really, that was because his dad was his hero. His dad was his role model, and he even though it wasn't the Navy and they would argue about it um, a lot, it was something that they shared that was unique and special for the two of them. When Chris retired, Tommy was who gave him his last salute. And when Tommy became a second lieutenant in the Marine Corps, Chris was who gave him his first salute. So that was really such a special time for all of us, but um, especially for the two of them. Chris was also, besides the athletic director, he was a coach. Very, very passionate about that. Loved being part of, of something with students and sharing his knowledge and his passion of sports. And often, he would coach the different teams for free. As an athletic director, you don't get an extra stipend if you step in as a coach. But he never wanted students to go without being able to participate in softball, volleyball, um, swimming. He might not have been an expert in any of those things, but he always was one to step up and, and uh, be the person, the coach for them if they didn't have them. I was the swim coach at South Broward before he actually was able to coach something, so he'd always tell me what to do, even though I had been swimming since I was three years old. He loved wrestling. Wrestling was his sport, and it was something that he would volunteer to do, even if they already had a coach. He was also the coach for Corey's Special Olympics team, and he was very dedicated to that, sometimes forgot that they were um, diff <laughs> differently abled, <laughs> and um, sometimes had to be reminded. <laughs> he was very, very competitive. But he loved um, being with the students and sharing his knowledge. He also worked as a lifeguard. He was selected as the first athletic director of the year in Broward County in 2017, um, something that was, he was very proud of and an honor that he was surprised to have because he was very humbled. He was that person that did all of the work in the background. If you needed something, you were going to ask Chris to do it. You knew he'd do it. This, this particular award meant more to him than, than I think people really realized. 
So now 2018 happens, February 14th of 2018, and all of a sudden this solid family structure that we had, not just our family, but his, his wrestling family, our one crazy family of love family, everyone who depended on him, who looked to him when they needed someone to, to talk to because you knew he wasn't going to share your secret. Someone to give advice about something. If you needed graham cracker cookies that he always shared with the kids, if you needed lunch money, if you needed anything, he was that person. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, he was gone. And you have to really step back and figure out what, where, what's your purpose in life? Where do you fit in? What is the definition of, of who you are when you're not whole anymore? And, you know, not just for our family, but for a whole community. So it's very hard in the beginning because you want to crawl in a hole and you just want to just try to forget everything that's happening. But life has to move on. You have to move forward. In my case, I had two kids. They were grown-ups, but they were looking to me on how we move through this together because Chris was that person. Chris was that guiding light that showed us how to move forward, and now that was my job alone. But you still have to find how to do that because it doesn't honor the person that you've lost if you get lost yourself. So you surround yourself with one crazy family of love and a community that lifts you up and gives you the space that you need when you're crying, um, when you want to do some crazy things um, that you have no idea what you're walking into, but you just know that it's so important for the whole community to remember your loved one because they, val they were valued and they mean something not just to you, but to the bigger picture. It really is so important to find the purpose in your pain. And that looks different for everybody. For us, it was important to stand up against gun violence, to make sure that we had safe schools, to make sure that we were providing the mental health that was necessary for our community to be safe, um, and to make sure that people that owned firearms were responsible with them. We started an organization called Stand With Parkland. And that was all 17 of those families that lost someone on February 14th. We collectively worked together to honor our loved ones with legislation that would help all kinds of people. So we started off with that. That was a collective thing that we needed to do together because we understood the pain we were going through and we wanted to make sure we could avoid that for somebody else. For us as a family, we wanted to do something to honor Chris. Um, someone recently told me that people die twice. They die the first time when they leave the earth, and they die the second time when people stop saying their name. So we started a foundation called the Chris Hickson Foundation, and we raised funds to be able to give scholarships to student athletes, something that was so very, very important to Chris. So for us, this was the best way to honor him. We have a, a 5K run every year that we're able to fundraise enough money to give scholarships. We've given over um, $50,000 to almost 30 students. This is the 5K we had the first year. 800 people came out to share and remember Chris. We do it right around his birthday. So although it's a fundraiser, for us it's really a celebration of his life and it's something that we're able to do every single year. We've done it since 2019 and every year that number of participants grows. And I, I think people are looking forward to it. It's something where it's not a sad time it's where we're celebrating the amazing person Chris was people come they share their stories with us about you know how he touched their lives and many times we had no idea that he even did those things so it's always nice for us to hear people remembering him in their own way um, and sharing it with us personally I also decided to run for the Broward County School Board I was a teacher for 32 years um, before I ran for school board. Chris was an educator. Education was 
the core of what our life was about. So the seat was open and I got talk, kind of snookered <laughs> into doing it. But it's a place where I can make a change and I can make the change in honor of Chris, with Chris. I always feel like he moves with me in the different activities that I do to honor him because he's always the guiding light that kind of reminds us what would he have done? How would he have looked at this? And it's really important for us to honor him in ways that make sense for him. Um, as I mentioned, you know, there's other ways. We did it as a foundation in his honor. I have a, a neighbor who lost her son, and he was very involved with Feeding South Florida. On the anniversary of when he passed away, there's a group of us that go and we volunteer at Feeding South Florida to honor him. I have another friend who her son was, young son was lost in a freak accident where a plane hit their car. She collects teddy bears in his honor and she gives them, you know, away to other, to police stations where when they come across children who have been abused, there's a way to comfort them. So it could be anything that you believe represents your loved one and honors them in such a way that their light continues to shine because it's always, always important when you have the opportunity to speak their name, to remind people of who they are, because that's how you move through the pain. That's how you are able to share the love that you had for them and the value that they had for a community is by honoring them, not just by saying their name, but by action. And the action looks different for everyone. So for us, um, we find it in a variety of ways, but we always, every, every opportunity that we get, say Chris's name, tell Chris's story, why he was so important, why we miss him, and why it's important that other people are not taken from the earth in this way. And we always not just remember Chris, but we will always remember all 17 of those beautiful angels that were taken that day. So I am Debbie Hickson. I am proud to be the wife of Chris Hickson, and I I'm here to show you and to tell you that you can find purpose in your pain. And as much as it's hard to struggle to get to the other side of grief, um, surround yourself with your tribe. Surround yourself with your one crazy family of love. And you'll get there. It just may take some time. Thank you. Goodbye.